Welcome to the Dodgers Nation post game show. I'm your host, Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. That's at DMAC underscore LA. The Texas Baseball Massacre tonight in Arlington. The Dodgers win by a final score of 15 to 3. The Dodger Bats came alive in yesterday's game, and that momentum carried over into this pivotal game three. And now we have ourselves a series, folks. The Dodgers get it done in a pivotal game two. We're going to talk about the big game tomorrow with Clayton Kershaw on the mound. Before anyone wants to talk about Clayton Kershaw not coming through in big spots in the postseason. We'll break down all that. I think that's a little overblown. Remember NLCS 2018. That pivotal game five, the series was tied, and Clayton Kershaw pitched a gem in that game, gave up just one run, pitched seven strong innings. There's no reason why Clayton Kershaw can't come out tomorrow and pitch well against his Braves team. The Dodgers, the fireworks show, guys. We're going to break it all down, but you know how we get down here on the Dodgers Nation post game show. Let me know where you represent Dodgers. Dodgers Nation from tonight. Give me your city, zip code, area code. Throw those down in the comments. Give me all your fire Dodger takes. And we've got lots to get into. So let's talk some Dodger baseball. Here we go. Jumping right into these comments. We got Sandra Molina. Hey, Doug, what do you think of this ass whooping? LOL. Oh, yeah, baby. I love it. Greg Pierce. Hey, Doug from Minoit. Uh, Minoit, uh, North Dakota. We, uh, Joe Bennett, we got Dodgers. Y'all trash and Dave Roberts tonight. That's from Assailed Loner. We got Michael Ford over on Facebook. Hi, Doug. What a game. What a game indeed. It feels like that fireworks show, 11 runs in the first inning, a Major League Baseball postseason record set by the Dodgers. And that's how you know this team came out with so much fight there in that first inning. Mookie Betts was the catalyst there. He was hustling to first, and he gets called saved. It was a nice stretch by Freddie Freeman. Mookie Betts was clearly saved, and the Dodgers would go on to score 11 runs in that inning, 10 runs with two outs in that inning, three home runs. You had two doubles. It was an explosive inning by the Dodgers. And like I said, they break a record there in that inning. You got to love it. Adversity breaks some teams, and it helps others break records. And tonight, the Dodgers broke a record there, 11 runs in that inning, and they just bury him. It was like Mortal Kombat, finish him right there in that first inning. And it was just a sight to see. And like I said, everyone to know how would that momentum carry over? Well, it most certainly did. You saw it in that inning. Cody Bellinger, Max Muncy, Corey Seager, Mookie, Mookie Betts. We're going to break it all down, but let's jump into this comment section. How did you guys feel about this blowout tonight, the 15-3 to win in, NL, in the NLCS Game 3? Let me know down below in the comments. Who was your player of the game? Let me know down below. We're going to break down everything. we got, hey, Doug, uh, where are all the Pedro Baez haters? Samuel Sandy. Yeah, Pedro Baez, he did a nice job today. Pedro Baez Definitely uh, had a nice bounce back game in tonight's one. So, yeah, give give uh, Pedro Baez some credit. He came there to pitch the seventh. He got Swanson to fly out, gets Austin Riley swinging on a fastball. Camargo was looking at strike three. So two punch outs for Petey Baez today. And, look, if you bring him in the game without inherited runners, he can be effective. So tonight was the spot for him. It was nice to get his confidence back up. Nice job, boys, from Eric. By the way, if you're on Facebook, be sure to share the show so you all your friends can join in here on the action. If you're on Twitter, be sure to retweet and mash that hard button for your Los Angeles Dodgers who are right back 
back in this series. This series mirroring 2018 in a lot of ways. Dodgers were down two and two games to one. Remember, they dropped game one on the road. They win game two. Then they dropped game three at home, win game four, and then Clayton Kershaw pitched well in that game five. And uh, I think tomorrow, Clayton Kershaw, you can overblow it as much as you want, legacy start, all this and that. But bottom line is Clayton Kershaw with the velo uptick, with the, with the depth on his slider, if he commands the strike zone tomorrow and he hits his spots, there's no reason why Clayton Kershaw can't throw six quality innings, have Dustin May piggyback off that, and then the Dodgers, they're going to feast on this Braves bullpen tomorrow. I have no doubt about it that tomorrow night we're going to be talking about a 2-2 series tie and three games to play with the Dodgers having the advantage, the pitching advantage and the depth. Advance. So I'm feeling really good about the Dodgers advancing to the World Series after tonight's bludgeoning. They bludgeoned the Braves tonight. Look, Texas is a big football state. They were putting up football numbers, touchdowns against this Braves offense. Remember yesterday, the Braves dug out, little overly excited Albies and the whole gang. Look, hey, the Dodgers, that woke them up, and I love the intensity and the fire from your Dodgers tonight. But here we go. That felt so good from Bro. By the way, if I don't get to your comment, I will circle back and make sure I do get it. We've got Bakersfield, Margie over there on Facebook. Do it again over and over from Alvo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we got uh, the Salt Lake City from Travis over on Facebook. Tacoma, Washington, Felix. Braves got slaughtered from Nick over on Facebook. We got uh, Samuel. Where all the uh, – we got uh, Cowboy Strings, Dodgers, baby. Repping L.A. Dodgers from Oak Town, Oakland, California in the house. Nice job, boys, from Eric. The Dodgers are back from Bark. The Dodgers are back in the series. Keep it going. Uh, Mary Connor, shout out to Mary Connor, a big fan of day one of the show for sure. He's great job, Dodgers. Hey, thanks for joining us here on the Dodgers Nation post game show, Miss <laughs> Miss Connor. Uh, Greg Pierce, sorry, uh, y'all yeah, want to give that. Sorry, I called a crooked number in the first. Technically, eleven is two straight numbers. Greg Pierce, I got to give it to you. You called it yesterday. They, you said that the Dodgers would come out and put up some runs there in the first inning. They most certainly did. They set a record 11 runs by your Los Angeles Dodgers there in that first inning. We got Joseph Megazzini repping from DTLA. What up? We got a day, we got a day one there. Uh, we got Visalia in the house. Let's go, baby, from Vince Erickson over on YouTube. We got uh, we got K-Mac over there from the 9-0-0-3-5-8-1-8. Alejandro Greg Pierce living in the 406, working in the 701. Just got to my hotel in Arlington to go to games four, five, and six. Hey, Michelle Carter, I knew you'd be repping, but hey, even though you're going to the game, you know we get us on Facebook, on YouTube. Be sure to hop on. We need you here on the Dodgers Nation post game show. Absolutely. So Dodgers in six, like I said. Daniel, that has been your call. Daniel Menzota, my uh, not from Greg Pierce. We got Vancouver, Washington. We got uh, Sandra from Los Angeles, California, putting it in. Moose, what do you think about tomorrow, Doug? Does the fire does the fire stay? So a couple thoughts on tomorrow's game is, yes, I do think you're going to see this offense continue to slug, consider, can continue to have the at-bats they were having. And what you have for the Dodgers right now is, look, heading into tonight, look, you saw what happened in, in the ninth inning of game two. That offense came alive with Cody Bellinger, Max Muncy, Corey Seager has been on fire this entire series. Heading into tonight, Corey Seager, he was OPSing 13-19 heading into tonight, and then Cody uh, Corey Seager, he goes three for four again. Three for four again for <clears throat> Corey Seager tonight. A double and a couple singles. And then Max Muncy hitting in that cleanup spot. That is what you want to see from a cleanup hitter. That cleanup hitter cleaned their clock tonight. And that big home run from Max Muncy getting him going, it was big. And I think that tomorrow it comes down to, yes, this, this Dodgers offense has to continue to pour it onto this Braves pitching staff. And hey, they have to grind through their bullpen and just burn their way through this bullpen. And I think that it's clear right now that uh, the Dodgers have a – a pronounced advantage moving forward in this series. They did not know what hit him there in that first inning. That was a knockout punch like ever seen. That was like prime Mike Tyson there in that first uh, in that first inning by your Los Angeles Dodgers. It was something special, and we're never going to forget that. That, like I said, it was called the Texas Baseball Massacre. It's October, and that's what it was for the Braves in that inning. But here, we're going to break down this game, but I want to do a little rapid fire here, get to your comments, and we'll look at this game a little deeper. We'll talk about tomorrow's game for sure because hey look hey at bottom line if you're in the Braves dugout right now if you're in the Braves clubhouse your snickers saying hey I don't care if it was 15 to 3 a win's a win we're still up two games to nothing and technically we took two road games and tomorrow's a new day and we can get back and take control of the series and then also look in that ninth inning there yes I, one thing I was looking for you know when you're up 15 to 2 15 to 1 you're looking for reasons Looking for what to looking for reasons to continue to watch the game when it's such a blowout of that magnitude. And I was just hoping that they wouldn't get some momentum like the Dodgers did 
in yesterday's game. You saw there in the bottom of the night, Flowers singles, Albies doubles, and then strikes. He's uh, Cleric strikes out Swanson, and then Riley grounds out for the second out. Camargo doubles to score Albies to make it 15-3. to So they did pick up a couple hits late in that game, but a couple things. The Dodgers, they didn't use Bruce Dar tonight. They didn't use Victor Gonzalez. If you don't know Victor Gonzalez, you need to know about Victor Gonzalez because he, to me, is a rising star. Doesn't get the pub that Bruce Dar gets, but to me, the way he can give you multiple innings, he's very effective out there as a wipeout slider, hits his spots. Didn't have to use any of those guys. Dustin May is on ice in the event that Clayton Kershaw can't give it a go tomorrow. And then also, if Clayton Kershaw only gives you four or five innings, look for D. May to come out there and bring Dustin Mania deep into the heart of Texas, where he's from. Justin, Texas. Shout out to D. May. But here, let's jump into this comment section. La uh, last night, innings carried over. Confidence from Mario. Wow. From Ray. We got uh, Base Lord. I told you, Doug, we hit so hard tonight. It's Maddie from Instagram. Hey, what up, Base Lord? From over on Instagram. Hey, it was a big night. The Dodgers... Look, I mean, I, that first inning, let's just go over that first inning there because it was something like I've never seen. I've watched baseball my entire life. And to see that fireworks show in Texas when, hey, you hear the Braves are saying, oh, yeah, they made a little run that ninth inning. Yes, you saw Corey Seager get that double. Max Muncy hit the bomb. Bellinger hit the triple. And they were so close to, to sending that game into extra innings and even winning it with a walk-off late in that game. Look, the Dodgers could easily be up two games to one right now. And they could we could be talking about a shorter series. Instead, they didn't make it all the way back last night. But they did exactly what they needed to do tonight. And they punched them in the mouth early. And they let them know that this is the Los Angeles Dodgers that you know and love. This is the team that finished 43-17, and 17, best record in baseball, and was the prohibitive favorite to win the World Series. Series, and you saw they send a message to that Braves team that, hey, you guys think you can slug? I'll show you what slugging is all about. We're going to set a record on you guys, and uh, I think it was really big. So let's look at that. Let's do a couple more of them. We'll jump in here. We got a max slam from Greg Pierce. Exactly. It was it was way, it was was way a max slam um, right there. Max Muds, he got funky on that one. Way to go, Dodgers from Gabby Castro. Jonathan, Jock always was is big time in the playoffs. Yeah, give Jock Peterson a lot of credit. Yesterday's game, you know, heading into tonight, Jock Peterson one for three with a single – and a walk, but he was hitting the ball hard, getting just under some pitches. And tonight, Jock Peterson showed you why Jocktober is a thing. Jocktober is back all Jock, all October long. Jocktober is a thing, so celebrate. And Jock Peterson tonight, he ends up going, he ends up going. Four, four hits, four for six for Jock Peterson, three RBIs, had that big three-run shot there in the first inning. He is my player of the game. I don't know who, who yours is, but throw that into the comment section. I've got Jock Peterson in that role. Look, hey, we all know that uh, that uh, Kyle Wright, one thing that I was looking for with Kyle Wright was would he be able to get our power lefties out? You saw Eggplant Rio. I mean, Edwin Rios – starting today and he did he lived up to that billing with that uh, that big bomb of his own but how would they get out our lefties from Cody Bellinger to Corey Seager to Muncie to Rios to to Jock Peterson and Kyle Wright he given he's given up seven home runs this year four of those seven were against lefties a lot of his doubles were against left-handed hitters in recent uh, starts he's fared well against the uh, against the left-handed batters but guess what we're not the Cincinnati Reds that with that anemic offense against the Cincinnati Reds we're not the Marlins we are the Los Angeles Dodgers the team that finished with 118 home runs best in baseball a team that averaged 5.8 runs per game they have not seen an explosive offense of of this magnitude, so I was not worried about Kyle Wright. I knew the Dodgers would get to him, and it's fitting that it was Jock Peterson. He's had some big home runs early in games that have swung games. Just look at how he touched up Strasburg last year in Game 5, NLDS Game 1. So, hey, to see Jock come through, it's big because if he can catch a hot streak, that changes this entire lineup because Jock Peterson – is really picking up down there. Chris Taylor is actually going through a little bit of a slump. He goes 0 for 5 tonight. So to throw Jock Peterson down there in the lower third of that lineup along with Evan Rios, that is prodigious power from your 7, 8, 9 hitters. Teams can't match that in Major League Baseball. That's why I'm very confident the Dodgers are going to win this series and get past the Braves. It's a big game tomorrow. They have to win tomorrow. Even if they don't, I still would give them a chance. But I like the way this offense is humming right now. Bro, the Braves lost in the first inning from Nick C. That was satisfying from from uh, me, Rojos, we got uh, uh, we got um, where's train at? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Ramix, Guatemala, welcome from Guatemala, Dodgers Nations, ladies and gentlemen. Jocktoberfest from Damien. Yeah, crack open one for Jock tonight, man. He was big because look, yes, you see the eleven runs, but at the point where he hit it, yes, Corey Seager doubled home, doubled home. Uh, 
Mookie Betts, but we're talking about a major cushion there provided by Jock Pierce. Let's go ahead and let's do, let's do 10 more, and then we'll look at that first inning because it was something spectacular. Tina G made the Jock Pop Fire Emoji, Pat Go Dodgers, Lodi California, Irma, awesome game for me. Yeah, if you have not, let me know where you're repping Dodgers Nation from down below in the comment section. Marquise, what's your opinion on Taylor? I think Chris Taylor is going through a little bit of a slide heading into tonight. Chris Taylor was slashing 167, 286, 167, OPSing 452 in this series. But uh, in the postseason, Chris Taylor is hitting 148. So, yes, he definitely is slumping for the postseason. Chris Taylor is... He's got four. He's got four hits and 27 at bats. But Chris Taylor's a guy. Look, yesterday he could have had that home run. Now I think it was 108, 108 off the bat. It would have been a home run at Dodger Stadium. So to me, I'm sticking with Chris Taylor. You saw what he can do defensively, and I know that he's going to start scorching balls and find his way out of that slump. And that's just how it is in baseball. Not all of your hitters are going to be red hot 100% of the time. And I think that Chris Taylor is just fine. And I know he's going to find his way out of it. And you never know. He's a guy that can save a game defensively. Look what he did. Against against the Padres this year with the throw out. Look what he did against the Milwaukee Brewers in 2018. So here we go. D Doug Crosby, a day one and no shot. Oh, my bad. Hey, Doug Crosby, I apologize to you, man, because you are day one. Man. I don't care if it's, a, if it's a spring training game. I don't care if it's a practice. You will tune in to the Dodgers Nation postgame show. So shout out to Doug Crosby over there in East Lansing, Michigan, repping always. We got uh, Brian Alex. Doug, you think we win tomorrow? I definitely think we're going to win tomorrow. Now, I can't predict a blowout like tonight. But I do like the Dodgers' chances with Clayton Kershaw on the mound and Clayton, a rested Clayton Kershaw. So to me, that's going to be a big factor. If that back is not barking up, I like Kershaw on the bump tomorrow. Look, and he's pitched in 33 of the Dodgers' 68 postseason games since 2013. His two postseason struggles have been well documented. In the regular season, he's got a 2-4-3 ERA with a 175 and 76 record. But in the postseason, 11-11 with a 4-2-3 ERA, a 1 07 whip. To me, it's all about keeping the ball in the yard for Clayton Kershaw tomorrow because that is really his Achilles heel in the postseason. Regular season, his home runs per nine sitting at .7. That almost that doubles in the postseason where it says that 1.4. You saw he gave up two home runs against the Padres in the NLDS. That uh, Those back-to-back -back shots from Hosmer and Machado. And then, look, that's kind of really been his Achilles heel. Matt Holliday, where would be Matt Holliday, um, so many times last year. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to relive this nightmare as we could. But to me, it's him keeping the ball in the, uh, in the yard, not giving up those big bombs. And if you look at Clayton Kershaw, you just want to avoid that. Because, yes, if you got to hit it down the lines if you want to hit a home run in that stadium. The center field wall, if, you, if they go deep in that part, he should be fine. But, look, as long as he's hitting his spots, as long as that slider is effective, he has the break on, he has that bite on his slider tomorrow, if he's hitting his spots, to me, there's no reason why Clayton Kershaw can't have a quality start tomorrow. Because, look, it's not like he's regressing with his velo in his spots. He's actually having an up year, a resurgence for Clayton Kershaw. And I'm very confident that tomorrow he gets his due. And, look, he had that 13 strikeout game against Milwaukee. And... Look, I mean, if it wasn't for – we could be – the narrative on Clayton Kershaw is very complicated. Yes, there's 2013, 2014 against the Cardinals, Phillies, if you want to talk about 2016 against the Cubs, the Contreras, the Rizzo home runs. Yes, there's times you can point to, but he's been thrown out there 10 different times on short rest, has Clayton Kershaw. And look, the reality is in 2017, if the Astros aren't out there banging trash cans like idiots, like the cheaters that they are, that are hopefully – losing at this point. You guys can keep me up to date on that. Clayton Kershaw would have won the World Series MVP. Game one, 11 strikeouts, no walks. Game five was cruising in the fourth inning and then all of a sudden they magically get hot. He threw 51 sliders and curveballs in that game. They didn't offer at one of them. So tomorrow he has an opportunity to really help rewrite the legacy. The only thing that's going to change it completely is if they hoist the Commissioner's Trophy and he wins the World Series. But tomorrow can go a big dis can tomorrow can go a long way for Clayton Kershaw's legacy. See if he has a quality start and the Dodgers get it done. I have full confidence in Clayton Kershaw. Let me know down below in the comments. How do you guys feel about Clayton Kershaw tomorrow in this spot? To me, we got uh, Ish Kershaw with a gem tomorrow. Anthony Madrid, you got Corey Seager as your player of the game. You can make a great case for Corey Seager because he's just been lighting it up, just hitting the cover off the baseball, just tattooing shots all series long for Clayton, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for Corey Seager. 
And uh, also, he got the scoring going. So, look, I mean, that first run, I mean, the guy, by the way, I see these salty Braves fans. Have you seen these salty Braves fans? If you're in the comments, they truly believe that if Mookie Betts was ruled out there, that they would have won this game. No, it was coming. That train was coming. You weren't going to stop it. It was a runaway train, and the Dodgers offense did exactly what they came to do tonight. They just just bludgeoned the Braves on a big stage, winning 15-3. to Julio Urias, we'll talk about him. He gets the win tonight. But, yeah, Corey Seager just keeps smoking stuff. He's, the home run for Corey Seager, 105.4 off the bat. The double, 105.9 off the bat. Corey Seager is just after what's happened in his career. Some of the injuries that have derailed him, I'm just so excited for Corey Seager. It's a Corey Book season, like I was saying earlier in the year. And I think that, hey, he could be a guy that could give you a World Series MVP or an NLCS MVP. Definitely is in the mix for it right now. Uh, we got uh, – uh, agreed, 31. Uh, we got uh, Remix. Do you think uh, uh, we got uh, October from Ish? We got How About Belly and the back with the wall robber. Yes, that is to, to me, at this point, when that happens, you just have to say you got bellied or you got codied because that's what it is. And uh, he robs Albies of a homer there. And uh, he really saved he really saved uh, Julio Urias early in this game because Julio Urias – in that in that first inning, he just comes out there. He was sitting for a long time, and uh, Cody Bell just makes a fantastic play on a ball, and it was very reminiscent to the one we saw on uh, uh, and the, uh, the, we saw on uh, on uh, against the Padres, where he robbed Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah, it was a spectacular play. Albies, who's Mr. Celebration for them, I think it was very fitting, and I think that the Dodgers took some extra motivation with some of the Braves' antics in that dugout in yesterday's game. But here we go. We got Chi-Chi. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, Patrick Gagne. Game three was the Dodgers' wake-up call. Exactly, Patrick. John, uh, we got to I'm good with Jocktober for player of the game. We got Ray Barsemian, a great leadoff hitter like Betts can change the entire complexion of a game in a series without even getting a hit. Betts' hustle on that play might not notice in the box score, but that was the key play of this game and allowed uh, to score exactly and open the floodgates for everything that followed. You're right on the money. Big facts from Ray Bar Simeon over on Facebook. Mookie, that is why you pay a guy almost $400 million and you commit to 12, 13 years for a player because, one, he's special. He's not a star. He's a superstar. He's not an all-star. He's a future Hall of Famer. And you see right there, he gets on base, he does his job, and he owned up to it. Mookie Betts is saying, hey, I got to do more. I have to make that catch yesterday. I have to find a way to generate runs. And he took the onus upon himself to make a statement in that first inning, runs out that. It's all about effort. Look, if that was Manny Machado, he would still be maybe t- right outside of first play, uh, right outside of home bay, uh, right outside of home plate. Instead, it's uh, he was hauling ass down that first baseline. He goes, ends up going first to third. He scores from first, scores from first on that uh, Corey Seager double, and he was, his sprint speed was over 28. His uh, he, he got from first to third in under 11 seconds. So Mookie Betts, he's the catalyst. He is the lightning rod at the top of this order that this lineup has been missing during this run, and you see superstar top shelf, t- superstar top shelf talent, and that's what it can do for you in big spots, and you're absolutely right. It did lead to the floodgates opening up, but here we go. We got Rich from Virginia, from Louise. We got Tennessee in the house. Uh, Mark Thomas. We got uh, Ish. Nice to hear the faint let's go Dodgers chant. Yeah, my girlfriend pointed that out too. A little a little let's go Dodgers chant. There are a lot of Braves fans down there. But, hey, we all know that this team's focused. This is a team that won game seven on the road last year. They're not going to be phased by any fan support. This team goes out there and executes its game plan. And this team, they have their eyes on the prize, and that's a World Series championship. And it was just a focused effort by this Dodger team. But, uh, repping the 818 from Betsozan, Brian Alex, you think we win the, we'll we'll tie the series tomorrow, Doug? And in short, absolutely. I think tomorrow we're gonna be looking at a two two tie and a three game series after that, with the Dodgers technically being the home team after that, with games six with games six and seven being the Dodgers home games. And I look look for the pitching depth. I think that they might throw Freed on short rest. Even if they do, no way he's gonna pitch like that to, against the Dodgers twice. I think that look, one thing about this year is you only play teams within your division within your with your American League counterpart, so to speak. So they didn't see Freed during the year, and I think that the Dodgers will make the necessary adjustments. I think they'll get to him, and they'll have better success against his curveball changeup. And I think that right now the Dodgers have all the momentum in the series, having crushed them basically – 
now from the seventh inning on yesterday. This has been the Dodgers series, and I'm uh, very confident the Dodgers can get it done. Look, I mean, this is a team that was down 2-1 to the Milwaukee Brewers, and they were up 3-2 after game five, and they went to uh, won a game seven on the road with a lot of this same cast of characters. So very confident. How are you guys feeling, though? Let me know down below in the comments. How did you see Jansen today? That's from uh, Abby over on YouTube. I thought that Kenley Jansen came in a nice little soft landing spot for Kenley Jansen. He took over in the sixth. He gets Ozuna to fly to center for the first out. And then Flowers got under a cutter for the second out. Albies lined to first for the third out. So one, two, three, inning on 10 pitches. Eight cutters, a slider, and a sinker. And the slider was averaging 89.9 miles per hour. And uh, the only issue, three hard-hit balls. Three hard-hit balls in that inning. Yet had Ozuna's 100.8 off the bat, Flowers 97.6, and Albies 90.5. Three hard-hit balls in that inning. One inning of work for Kenley Jansen. For Julio Urias, five innings combined, he gave up just three hard hits. So to me, the velo really wasn't there. Had better command on that cutter tonight, so that was a positive note. But I think that, uh, look, you know my stance on Kenley Jansen. It's closer by committee. He's not the lockdown guy he once was. It's no fault of his own. It's just father of time is undefeated. And uh, But, hey, there are going to be some matchups that will play up for him, and they're going to need him to get some outs in this series. But uh, I thought that all in all, he did a nice job considering it was such a low leverage situation, but a one, two, three inning, um, didn't get any swing and miss, zero swings and misses in his appearance. But for the most part, Kenley Jansen was fine. No, no worries. Look, I just don't want to see him in a tough spot late in the game. Astros winning 42. Thanks to Donis for keeping me posted here. Leo, that park is totally different when the roof is open. Yeah, the roof is open. The people are there. Look, I mean, tonight, the ball was definitely flying. You definitely see the ball flying out to that uh, to that right field, to the right field bleachers over there. And, uh, yeah, I think that I'm not as worried about that as I was earlier on. I know that at this point now the Dodgers, if they barrel up balls, if they get hard contact, for the most part, as long as it's not to deep center field, right or left center, most of the time those balls are going to find a way uh, into, the, into the bleachers. So I'm not too worried about it. And uh, Tina Jeep, we got to keep it going from Chris and Tom. Two pitches, and the Braves were in trouble. Yeah, I love that, too. The Dodgers, they scored on two pitches tonight. And, uh, yeah, why don't we get into that? Let's do a couple more. We need to win that piece of metal. I love that little shot at Rob Manfred. Yeah, there's never a wrong time. If you're new to the Dodgers Nation postgame show, first of all, a couple reminders. Be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Dugout podcast, where we take all of your takes from tonight's episode, condense it, add additional analysis and post-game reaction. You can find it wherever you get your podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. And then also, be sure to gear up. Gear up over at DodgersNation.com slash shop, the hottest Dodgers merch in the game. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel over at YouTube.com slash DodgersNationTV. And also, be sure to tune in to the pregame show hosted by the senior editors here at Dodgers Nation, Brooke Smith, and the producer of this show, Real FRG, Clint Pasillas. So be sure to keep it locked for all things Dodgers Nation. This whole post, let's take this away, uh, this whole postseason run. But here, back over here, Braves fans are crying all night about Turner kicking the ball. I know, Moose, they were. They were crying about that little kick. And I love it because it was on the anniversary of the 1978 World Series where um, Reggie Jackson, off that Martin throw, uh, did the little hip action. And uh, so the Dodgers, hey, man, you never know when you're going to get your comeuppance. And uh, look, hey, that, that's the Braves got it. And uh, the Dodgers were able to benefit off that. He was like, hey, you, I'll kick it and you crank it. <laughs> and that's what Max Muncy did right on that pitch. But uh, Belly looked like he was on another planet from Brian Alex. I mean, when does he not <laughs> – um, Ray, Bar we got to Ivan. It's about momentum. Dodgers win tomorrow. Yeah, let me know, guys. Throw those scores in there, too. I want some score predictions. Machado would have gotten th thrown out. I love that from Damian. Made me laugh. Machado would, have, would get thrown out from a ball hit to left. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a little go. Uh, we got Verdell. What's up, Verdell? Not Taylor Beats. LA Baby from Kenny Chi. What up, Kenny Chi? I like that. Uh, Delirium, the force is with us. Texas is in the house. Hey, and any, hey, down there in Texas, repping Debra Young. We need to kill it during their bullpen game. Yeah, that is the mission right now, is to find a way to get well, – they use Shane Green late in that one. But, yeah, I think the Dodgers um, will definitely uh, will definitely find a way to uh, – to get uh, to get to that bullpen tomorrow, and I just like the I mean I just like the fact that they are batting first, and like also you got to give Enoa credit. Enoa credit, he did give him some innings there, so it wasn't as bad. We didn't get to burn through that bullpen as much as we would have liked to. Enoa goes four innings today, gives up just one hit, four strikeouts, so that was a positive sign. 
uh, a positive development for the Braves tonight. But all in all, yeah, we definitely have to find a way to get to that bullpen and get and just smoke through this bullpen game and give them the run support. Look, Julio Urias, everyone wants to talk about his first se- first inning woes. Well, you don't have to worry about that when you have an 11-run cushion. And I would like to see Clayton Kershaw benefit from some of that same run support. He's gotten it all, pretty much all of his uh, – all year from this year and last year. But, uh, yeah, I definitely want to see that for sure. And, uh, yeah, it was just a – it was a big night tonight for for the Dodgers. I mean, getting through that uh, – getting through this one was uh, – was just such a big uh, – I mean, look, look, you're not coming – look, it's happened once. It's happened once, and that's one thing that I use to say that baseball is probably one of the be- – is the best sport, is that you can legitimately say in a seven-game series a team has came back trailing three games to nothing. Happened in 2004. Our manager would know a little bit about that. But for the most part, you're pretty much backs against the wall too much, and you're probably not going to come back. But, yeah, it was just big for the Dodgers to come out, smoke them early. Look, Mookie Betts was probably in his hotel – room napping in the sixth inning. They were taking Seager out. They were taking uh, 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 Mookie Betts out. So it was definitely uh, definitely big time for the Dodgers to get out there. But hey, let's jump back in the comment section. That was a good uh, – that was a good wood ass. Yes, it was. Dodger redemption from Ryan. Who will relieve Kershaw tomorrow from Chum? I think by Mo- – you got to assume it's Dustin May. Dustin May is probably going to be the guy that's going to come out there in relief of Clayton Kershaw – in that one, that's what I expect to see there. But, uh, yeah, it was. It was a Texas-sized ass-whooping down there in Texas. And, uh, yeah, like you just said. And the Dodgers, like I said, they haven't – like I was telling you yesterday, yesterday's show I said the Dodgers have not lost three games in a row all year. They were not going to lose this game. The Dodgers were not going to go down 0-3 against this Braves team. They have too much talent. They have too much resilience. And they stepped up to the plate tonight, and they bludgeoned the Braves by a final score – of 15 to 3, Corey Seager 3 for 4 with a home run, but don't use Cleric ever again. Yeah, I think the Cleric Cleric has been definitely an issue, especially if you're throwing him against righties. If you throw him against righties, I worry about Cleric. The three batter minimum definitely affects the way they use Adam Cleric, but yeah, that definitely wasn't uh wasn't a positive wasn't a, a, a positive a pro from tonight's game. So uh, I'm going to get drafted from GG. Ray Barcima, Jansen look good too. We need to finish them off. We got uh, Baez and Jansen both showed that they're ready to go. Bruce Davis, Doug, we got to use the same lineup. Hey, Bruce Davis, I know. By the way, Bruce, I told you you'd be back. You were a little emotional last night, but hey, I don't fault you too, man. I get in a bad place anytime the Dodgers lose, and I love that lineup. I love seeing, <clears throat> I love seeing against a righty, against a righty that struggles against lefties, Edwin Rios. And Edwin Rios, <clears throat> who uh, just stepped up big in tonight's game, hits that solo shot. That was majestic shots from from Edwin Rios, who hadn't played since the Brewers series. And remember, he had that strain, didn't even play against the Padres, to come off their cold and hit that home run. The man has power. You just never know when he's going to pop. So I definitely like this lineup, too. I like Jock down there. I liked. Uh, I still am a fan of Will Smith right there in that five-hole following right in between Max Muncy and Cody Bellinger. Look, this is a team that isn't about the status of being the cleanup hitter, being the 5-6 hole. This team just wants to get, score as many runs as they possibly can, and I think that everyone was in a good spot tonight. I was a big fan, so yeah, great point over there, Bruce Davis. I definitely am with you. Uh, Jose Rod, 7-3 Dodgers. Greg Pierce, 7-2 Dodgers. GG, 3-7 Dodgers. Hey, bro, what's the podcast called? It's from Nathan Cervantes. So the podcast, go to Dodgers Nation, Dodgers Dugout. So just Dodgers, if you search Dodgers Nation, Dodgers Dugout, spell like my name. <laughs> uh, shout out to Mr. Gary Lee, the uh, um, for coming up with that one. That you'll yeah you'll get you'll sub to that podcast and yeah you can hear all your takes right over there. So uh, Dodgers eight to five from Glenn Williams, back the armored car up for Corey Seager and resign. That's a great point. Yeah, at this point, Corey Seager, you see what he does when he's healthy. When he's healthy, he's an All Star MVP caliber player, and I think that. Corey Seager, I remember, like, it was a couple, it was a while ago when he was talking about Mookie Betts. And when he was talking about Mookie Betts, Corey Seager said, yeah, we're going to have him for some, so many years to come. I took that as saying Corey Seager knows that he's going to be a Dodger for life. Because Corey Seager, if you want to move him to third, have him focus on 
have him focus on his offense. If you want to have him DH, if DH becomes a per- permanent in the National League, that's something you consider. But, yeah, I'm totally with you. The Dodgers need to back up the Brinks truck for Corey Seager. You don't want to let that homegrown talent go to waste because Corey Seager, if he puts together seasons like this and he stays healthy, he's a guy that can make a run at the Hall of Fame, especially with a lot riding on this next couple weeks. So I'm a big fan of that take right there. I don't want Francisco Lindor. This is not Lindor season. Corey Seager is a guy that he's just – he's been a smoke show. He has been an absolute smoke show in the postseason, and he's a guy that should be rewarded with a big contract. I don't think that you'll see him uh, swing in any deals like uh, like you're going to be seeing uh, like you're going to be seeing uh, Mookie Betts because because uh, you know who his agent is, right? His agent is Mr. Scott Boris, and Mr. Scott Boris doesn't like to do deals like Mookie Betts and sign that extension. But hey, if he wants to be aggressive, he wants to be a Dodger for life. I think that they could work something out. But uh, at this price, though, he's gonna if he keeps playing like this. That is going to be a pretty big bag for Corey Seager. Maybe you should offer him a deal when he was down and out injuries. Who knows? But uh, let's win it for Kobe. I love that take. A Mamba forever. Exactly. Just like 88, a World Series for the Dodgers. Got 6-3 over from Kelly over on Periscope. Greg Pierce. Kirsch gives up two solo shots from our bats. And back to him, 7-2. We got uh, where was the Braves closer to catch all those Dodgers home runs? Yeah. Melanson, hey, that's not as funny, right? 300. Oh, my God. Jonathan, if this goes down, man, I will be very ecstatic, man. We got 300 nothing. 300 nothing. You thought today was bad. Wait till you see what Jonathan has predicted for your Dodgers tomorrow. Judith, 5-3 Dodgers. Ray Barcimia, Tampa has the tying runs on base with nobody out in the seventh inning against uh, the cheat throws. Love that. Uh, Dodgers and Tampa Bay in the World Series. Thank you for keeping me posted. Uh, Dodgers versus Rays 2020 World Series. Where were the uh, – we got uh, – I think Bellinger will hit a big homer tomorrow. Yeah, let me know. Call your shot tomorrow. Who you got hitting a bomb for the Dodgers? I think tomorrow – yeah, well, tomorrow – I got to think about it for a second, actually. Uh, <laughs> Bubble of Doug, what do you think about the – what do you think is the key to the Dodgers now from Mr. Bubble over on, on YouTube? I think right now the key for the Dodgers is just continue this approach, continue this balance of a- aggression, but also working that pitch count of having great strike zone awareness, not swinging that stuff outside the zone, don't expand the strike zone, and just stay aggressive and keep barreling up balls. Because, look, you have the talent. Be patient. You find a pitch to hit. Find a, po- a pitch in your, in your fun zone and score some runs. If you get on – you got to get that man over. It's your responsibility to get guys home and just stay with this aggressive approach. Also, I think if you're the Dodgers, you're going to want to get some – Remember, this is not your traditional seven-game series. This is a seven-game series in consecutive days at a neutral site. So if you're the Dodgers, you definitely want to find a way to get some bulk innings from one of your starters, whether it be Clayton Kershaw going six strong tomorrow or Walker Buehler won another strong start from Walker Buehler, Tony Gonsolin. It has to be an all-hands-on-deck situation for these for these starters because, I, look, if there's one chink of the armor here to me right now is I don't have very much confidence with some of these bullpen pieces, and that's just what I've seen so far. Kenley Jansen, a nice night tonight sure if you want to call it that Pedro Baez on certain situations where there's no runners on base I think he could be an option Blake Tryon is a guy though if he's not keeping that sinker low and he's not commanding it it starts finding the middle of the play a little middle middle action there he's a guy that can get tattooed so I'm a little worried about about Blake Tryon at the moment Joe Kelly I want to see get a little more run I would like to have to see him do have a little more leash in yesterday's game so I think that what the key really is now is pretty much the key like it always is it's score runs and find a way to execute with runners in scoring position and also have the bullpen come through. So to me, it's all those factors, and really what it comes down to is, like I said, as the deeper we get in this series, the Dodgers' depth is going to pay off, and that is why the Dodgers are a team that won 43 games in the regular season because you have guys in the bottom of your order, guys like Jock Peterson, guys like Chris Taylor, guys like Edwin Rios that can step up, and I think that as long as this Dodgers' offense stays free, they stay loose, you don't want to play tight like Walker Buehler's pants, right? You want to just play loose, play free I have full confidence that this Dodger team will advance but yeah if you guys want to give me some of your keys we can keep going crazy with this uh, but I want to get back into some of these comments right here Dodgers 7 Braves uh, we got go Dodgers from uh, Steve May we got Damian this is Seager's team he needs to be signed Rory Seager uh, blow Lindor's numbers all year long absolutely Uh, do you like the DH from Chime from Haim I believe I actually uh, have been swung this year. I have been swung, and I definitely am a, a guy who look. I've never been at. I've never been driving to Dodger Stadium and thought to myself, "Man, I cannot wait! I cannot wait to see 
Pedro Baez bat or something like that. I cannot wait to see Walker Buehler with the stick, although he didn't have that home run against the Cardinals. And then also, I just don't want it to limit – keeping some of our players longer in their career. Because now the way I look at it is, yes, with the DH, Justin Turner looks like a more attractive option. You can keep guys healthier like A.J. Pollock or Corey Seager maybe in the future with via the DH. And I think that if, it, if it's proven that the fans like it and that more runs brings in more fans, I'm all for the growth of the game of baseball. So at this point, I am a fan of the DH. I do think that, yes, the DH was created by the American League to try to boost interest in the sport because they were suffering there in the 70s. And the Dodgers in the National League, the senior circuit is the original league, so you're kind of adapting to their style of play. But, hey, I think at some point you see the game evolving to the point where I do think this is here for good. But uh, Rios brings in two runs from Abraham. We got Mookie will hit two bombs. Joe Bennett, I like that. I want to see Mookie go deep and get some extra base hits. Uh, We got – uh, Bellinger is the J.R. Smith of MLB. I like that. I haven't heard that one. Maybe left though. Uh, but, yeah, let's look at that first inning, man. Let's get into this game here, guys. Uh, keep firing away with your comments, guys. Give me your keys to victory tomorrow. Call your shots. Uh, we'll definitely circle back to your comments. Let's do, like, ten more, and we'll read here. Uh, Brian Alex, uh, we got um, – uh, Jonathan, you're you're a smart guy, Doug. Great base. Oh, thanks, man. Hey, um, it's all you guys. It's all you guys. Your show. Uh, Daniel, uh, <laughs> Dodger Dogs from Fresno. We got Fresno. Dodger Dogs from the home of the Bulldogs over there on Fresno. DH is where to stay from Wilfredo. Careless WP tonight. The players prevented Roberts from doing something stupid. Uh, that's not of the worst point because, like I said, I wasn't a fan of the of, of yesterday with Dave Roberts kind of managing not to win, so to speak, not using Bruce Dar when he was available, going with Petey Baez there in that inning. When, uh, but yeah, we won't we won't focus on that. We won't harp on that. If you want, go to the podcast, listen to tomorrow's. But uh, yesterday's where we talked about that. Uh, DH is great for the bums from Steve May. Yeah, when you have the firepower that the Dodgers have and you got guys on your bench that can produce, the DH is something that helps you. Like I call the DH the Dodger hammer because that's what it needs to be. Guys like Edwin Rios and uh, tonight JT was the DH. So JT, if he can focus on hitting, tonight Justin Turner, he goes one for three scores two runs, and he DH, and then Austin Barnes came in and replaced him when the game got out of hand. But uh, got to stay hot from Jose Rod. Yeah, stay hot, stay healthy, and continue to execute and continue to find a way to make uh, make this Braves pitching staff work. And when they do make mistakes, punish those mistakes. And I think that that's what the Dodgers did today. That's what they did late in yesterday's game, whereas we saw that from the Braves early on. But, uh, yeah, let's look at this game. Let's look at that first inning, man. We got we to break it down, right? Top of the first inning, Betts grounds to third on a play where he was originally ruled out. A great stretch by Freddie Freeman. It was closed, but it was overturned and goes for an infield single. Mookie's hustle started the inning off. Like you pointed out earlier in the comments, Seager first pitch swinging, the eager Seager. He doubles the left center. It rolls to the wall. Riley stumbles a little bit, but he, Mookie scores from first. Like I said, he got from first to home in 10.47 seconds. Dodgers out the gates with a 1-0 lead. By the way, it was important to get that one nothing lead because the Braves this year, 24 and 6 when they score first and they had scored first. They had struck they struck first blood in all seven of their postseason games this year. So for the Dodgers to go out there and set the tone and score first, I think it was huge. And then Justin Turney grounds out for the first out. Max Muncie, he grounds the second for the second out. Corey Seager advances to third on the play. And then Will Smith, big Willie style, gets jiggy with a double to center to score Seager from second to make it 2-0 Dodgers. And then Cody Bellinger draws a two-out free ride to first to get the Dodgers runners on first and second with two outs. The Dodgers had as many hits in that first uh, first as Kyle Wright had given up all postseason long. So they were getting to Kyle Wright in that one. And then Jock Peterson, he crushes a hanging slider for a three-run shot to make it 5-0 Dodgers. He had three hard-hit balls last night, nothing to show for it. Tonight he goes up there and he cranks one out, gives the Dodgers a big 5-0 lead. I thought that was it. I was like, hey, I'll take 5-0. I will take 5-0. Urias on the mound, and boy, little did I know what was going to happen next. Edwin Rios comes up there. I didn't even see Edwin Rios hit the home run. Honestly, I was just running around excited about Jock hitting that three-run shot, but Rios, he hits an absolute move. Moonshot on a fastball. That makes it 6 nothing. Dodgers. CT3 takes a walk, and that was it for Kyle Wright. In comes Dayton, and then Mookie Betts finds himself back up, to, uh, back up at the plate. He takes a walk, and then Corey Seager, he singles for his second hit of the inning on a line drive to center. Justin Turner, he gets hit by a pitch to give the Dodgers bases loaded, and then on a 3-2 count. So we're talking 5 nothing. 
and a two outs on a 3-2 count. The funky Muncie crushes one deep into the heart of Texas to make it 11-0 Dodgers. The Dodgers cleanup hitter cleaned the Braves clock on that one. I'm telling you, Justin Turner kicked it so Muncie could crank it. That was the play right there. I'm telling you, that was some Jedi stuff from JT, the ginger Jesus on that one. He's got that savvy. I'm telling you, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know why a baseball player would move his, his foot like that. But, hey, I don't care. I do not care. It's like the hand of God. Uh, the uh, the the hand of God goal by Maradona in soccer, right? Sometimes you just have to leave it up to the baseball gods out there, right? So then Will Smith, so uh, so eleven runs, so yeah, so eleven runs in the first. Dodgers they set a new Major League Baseball record, most runs by a team in the first inning in Major League Baseball history. They get eleven runs on seven hits, a pair of doubles, one by Seager and one by Will Smith. Three deep flies, a three-run shot by Mr. Jock Tober, Jock Peterson, a solo bomb by Rios Grande, and a thank you, man, Grand Slam from the Funky Muncie. So that that's some serious fireworks in Texas at this point. Look, at this point, it was just unbelievable. So 14 plate appearances, three walks, a hit by a pitch. Kyle Wright goes two-thirds of an inning, gives up seven runs on five hits, two walks, two home runs, 28 pitches, 12 strikes, and a 32-minute inning of pure joy if you're a Dodger fan that's for sure so they smoked that sinker all night long he did not have a, he did not have any success with it the Dodgers were right on top of it Peterson slugged that slider Rios's bomb came on that four seamer so the Dodgers they were hitting fastballs they were hitting off speed there and like I said it was Mortal Kombat they finished them right there in that inning it was only the second time in major league history that two pitchers had given up seven runs or more in a postseason game it happened in 1999 in the AL CS with uh, Cologne and Reed, they gave up. Uh, Cologne gave up seven runs, and Reed gave up eight there in 1999. So that was just an explosive inning. Let me know. Give me. How, let me know how you guys are reacting. I want to know how you guys were reacting to that 11-run inning by your boys in blue. That historic inning. We saw history tonight in Texas, and uh, I want to know how you guys were reacting to that. Joe Buck gets on Joe Sm- uh, John Smoltz's nerves sometimes. Hey, who does it, honestly? Um, They broke for a commercial in the first inning. That was funny. That's a great point. I love that. Uh, They did. They're like, hey, man, we got to break this up. You guys are at 32 minutes. We've got to get Ford some money or whoever was the advertiser. Um, Or or a little uh, uh, hand-cooked tires or whatever it is that uh, my man cursed out. Dude, remember uh, um, going nuts? We got Damian. uh, A big statement win. Moose, we needed to punch them right in the mouth. They did. The Dodgers – Threw a haymaker. They threw a haymaker there. Like I said, it was Mike Tyson in his prime, and boom, that was like some spink stuff. Or it was just it was ridiculous. But but the, now <clears throat> I was just going. Yeah, I wanna, oh yeah. The, let me if you have not though. Let me get your reaction to how you reacted to that 11 run inning. We got big statement win. We got Moose. You know who's feeling the pressure right now? The Atlanta Braves, and they have a rookie pitching. Yes, exactly. The, all the pressure to me falls on the Braves at this point. And uh, yeah, at, th- at this point, I definitely think that uh, you you have to they have to answer the bell and they have to find a way to get some runs. Kyle Wright um, get, got rocked today, and uh, yeah, I think the Dodgers are are in there are they're sitting pretty and they're in a great position to find a way to uh, to even things up tomorrow. But um, let's uh, I, think I lost my comments a little bit. Oh, here we go. Uh, Dodgers need to score a few runs uh, in the first again tomorrow. That will get in their head. Yeah, the Dodgers come out early and set the tone like they did tonight and start the game from uh, uh, ahead and give Kershaw that cushion. I think that that will go big time. That will go a long way for the Dodgers to finish the job tomorrow and even the series. I think you're absolutely right. The boys should have put up at least 20, too many left on base. I mean, you could say that if you want for sure. The Dodgers, I mean, left the, the Dodgers tonight, uh, they ended up <clears throat> they ended up going – Two, five for 13 with runners in scoring position. They did strand 12 runners there. They did have some opportunities late in this one that they didn't capitalize on. You saw right there, top of the eighth, top of the eighth when uh, – Chris Taylor's he struck out swinging. Uh, Kike singled. Beatty was hit by a pitch. Barnes was called out on strikes, and Muncie walked to load the bases. And then that was it for Webb. Shane Green came in, and he struck out Will Smith with the bases loaded. So there were opportunities there 
where the top of the six, Jock Peterson got a hit. Yeah, after that, after the third hit, after the third inning, just three hits after that third inning. It was a Jock single in the second, a Kike single in the eighth, and a Jock single there late. So, yeah, I think for the Dodgers, look, I mean, Mookie was out of the game. Seager was out of the game. If their big guns were in the game, I think that this could have gotten even uglier than it already was. But uh, we'll take 15. We'll take a 15-3 to win in game two, in game three, and all day, every day. But uh, why does Joe Buck hate the Dodgers so much? Good question. Uh, now, I think that a lot of broadcasts, I think a lot of people always think that their their team hates the the their that the broadcaster hates their team just kind of feels like that he does get a little extra dramatic a little extra dramatic when good things happen for the opposing team I'm telling you I've rewound it I've looked at the decibels in his voice there is something there but uh hey man honestly do yourself a favor I'd rather listen to Charlie Steiner make mistakes on the radio with Rick Monday because that's honestly what I do a lot of the times um was 15 um we got um Austin Barnes needs to cr- contribute to get his hits. He's going to catch for Kershaw. Yeah, Austin Barnes is a guy that that still is uh, a – that, yeah, tonight he goes over two, but I still think that his value, like I said, is making Kershaw feel comfortable and uh, making Kershaw feel comfortable. And, yes, if you can get a single, if you can get a base hit, then that's great. You'll take it in the postseason – if you look at him, though, in the postseason, he's four for seven. He's four for seven, hitting 571. Yes, that's a small sample size, but only one strikeout, one walk. So definitely he is a guy that will get it done. By the way, have they announced that uh, Have they announced that uh, Kershaw is going to be starting tomorrow? Let me know down below in the comments. Kind of hop onto this right when the game's over. But uh, uh, they scored 13 against the Yankees in game one. Um you know who John Smoltz is rooting for, David Grant. Yeah, exactly. I mean, John Smoltz. We a, yeah. So let's jump back into this one. A um, couple more guys, then we'll wrap things up. But yeah, what a win tonight, man! What a win and a fantastic job by the Dodgers to get things done. Kind of we'll talk a little bit about Julio Urias before we wrap things up. So bottom of the first, Urias. He need to come out there, spin it like it was, uh, and, and spin it like it was a tie game. I want to see him come out there. And yes, it's different when you're up 11, but Julio Urias came out there. He walked Acuna, and then he uh, walks Freeman. So he walks Freeman, and then Marcelo Zuni takes a changeup for strike three for the first out. Darno lines the first for the second out. Then Albies hits one to deep center, and Bellinger makes a fantastic play on it. He was playing shallow, but he covered a lot of ground, so he saves him in that inning. Uh, but for the most part, after that, he was cruising. He was cruising tonight. And that's what he does. When he can calm down, uh, when he after he gets out of that first inning, you saw tonight Julio Urias, 101 pitches, gives up one run, that Pache home run there. A little bit of a mistake, but a nice piece of hitting too. Wasn't even the worst pitch there. Three hits, 12 for 20 on first pitch strikes. So you want to see him start ahead in the count a little more and start paying that strike zone early on there. 14 swings and misses, 27 foul balls. So they were fouling him off a little bit, but he did exactly what the Dodgers needed to do, especially up – 11 nothing after one. He ate up those big five innings, gave up the home run to Pache. Belly robs Albies of that three-run shot to first. And like I said, the only issue I had with him, he wasn't throwing strikes early on. But once he settled down, it was furious Urias, like I like to see. He's up there inducing soft contact. You see a lot of quick, easy outs. And the first three innings, it looked like that there was a possibility that, oh, no, he's only going to go three. We're going to have to burn some bullpen pieces. But I just want to give Julio Urias a lot of credit tonight for finishing those five innings, throwing over 100 pitches, because it would have not ever felt like a loss if you, a loss if the Dodgers lost, if the Dodgers won by this margin, but we had to burn through some bullpen pieces. But to save any of our big guns out there in the bullpen – because he threw five innings, I think that was big tonight. And then also you keep his confidence high moving forward. Like I said, Julio Urias, now he's only given up one run through, I want to say, so five against the Padres, three against the Brewers, so another five tonight. So look at that, one run in 13 innings. I know basic math, guys. <laughs> um, so you love that from Julio Urias. And, yeah, I think I did. I think he did a great job tonight. And, uh, yeah, other than that, let's see. Other things I want to talk about is, yeah, how do you guys feel about uh, – how do you guys feel about the fact that um, – oh, yeah, one thing I wanted to point out too is, oh, yeah, how do you guys feel about the fact that – some people were saying, oh, you should just sit Urias and then you have Urias go tomorrow and then Kershaw, you move him back. I thought it was totally fine how they handled Urias tonight. And I thought that, look – 
Clayton Kershaw, he's earned the opportunity to go. Absolutely. And like I said, I gave you that game five uh, game where he pitched very well. And uh, the only issue is Clayton Kershaw trailing in his series. That's where he gets into even more trouble. So, hey, tomorrow we're going to see someone we probably have never seen. Um, I mean, we've seen him play, uh, pitch well. There's been some spots where he's come through. I mean, I can give you plenty of examples, but I think tomorrow you're going to see something spectacular from Clayton Kershaw. I think he's going to come out and give you a solid six innings, five, six innings. I think they're going to hand it off to Dustin May. He'll finish the win. I think you'll continue to see this offense stay hot. Um, so, yeah, how do you guys feel about tomorrow's game? A couple of things, too. Uh, yeah, we didn't have to use Bruce Dar Gonzalez. Um, and, yeah, like I said, pretty much we wrap things up tonight. The Dodgers, like I said, they could easily be up two games to one. And tonight that offense just showed up early. They just shut them down, and uh, the Dodgers got it done. They win game three, a game we'll never forget because tonight was history. 11 runs there in that first inning. And uh, I think that uh, the Clay and Kershaw, yeah, also, look, 2018, he pitched a gem against the Braves in 2018. 2018 against the Braves, he goes eight strong. I think he pitched eight scoreless innings, right? Eight scoreless innings there in the NLDS against the Braves. So Clay and Kershaw, yes, his postseason failures are going to get magnified more because that's what you do in baseball. You just look at the failures, but you consider all the opportunities, all the consecutive days, that they've, they've, all the times they pitched him on short rest, all the tough spots they put him in. I think Clay and Kershaw has a chance tomorrow to really just have a quality, quality start and get this team where it needs to be, and that is tied 2-2 heading into Game 5. But, hey, guys, thanks again, as always, for rocking with us here on the Dodgers Nation Post Game Show. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. That's at DMAC underscore LA. That's at DMAC underscore LA. Be sure to head over to DodgersNation.com. You're home for all things Dodgers analysis, post-game interviews, whatever it is. If it's Dodger-related, you'll find it over there on DodgersNation.com. News and rumors, the whole nine. And then also be sure to join that YouTube channel. Mash that heart button and mash that subscribe button on that YouTube channel. But, yeah, thanks again, guys. We'll do a couple last takes, a couple at the buzzer here. A couple at the buzzer here. We got... It's the ninth inning, two outs. Ninth inning, two outs, two strikes. And you got a couple couple more takes here for you guys. Uh, Gratterall tomorrow, 110 mile per hour heat. Kershaw goes seven. Victor in the eighth. Bazooka in the ninth. I would definitely be okay with that. I mean, if you want, bump that down. Have Joe Kelly in there for one of those innings. Um, see you tomorrow, Doug, from Damien. Yeah, we'll be back as always, guys. Uh, thanks for the love, guys. We got uh, thanks, Doug, for Little Mixer. David Grant over there. We got Go Braves. We got uh, Dan Peck. We need a strong seven from Kershaw and an offense to be on track again. It's as close to a must-win game as we've seen so far. Yeah, tomorrow is – it's not as must-win as I think. I do honestly think the Dodgers could back – the Dodgers could come back down 3-1. You know why? We know what Atlanta is. Atlanta, they are the city that's known to blow leads. That is Atlanta. We saw what happened when they were up 20-3 to in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. That is what they do – we saw what happened the first couple of years. So it's the it's Atlanta. They're a team that they're a city that knows how to blow leads. But I think that tomorrow it's about the Dodgers just playing their game. It's not even about the Atlanta Braves to me. To me, it's about the Dodgers focusing on themselves, focusing on their approach at the plate, their pitchers. We need some bullpen pieces to step up and get hot right now. But I have full confidence in the Dodgers. Thanks, great. Show, uh, 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 we got um, a great uh, Dustin May out of the pen. Uh, from, I, I like that too. Not feeling so brave anymore. Jonathan, I like that. Let's go, Doug. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, uh, Teresa over there on Facebook. Hot take. Bets goes deep. Kim Preep. Uh, go go get them, Dodgers from Teresa. Lisa, um, we got, uh, we got, uh, yeah, who, who do I got tomorrow going deep, man? I, I got it. I think that. Uh, I think that Corey Seager goes deep again. I think that Corey Seager stays hot and Corey Seager smokes one to uh, another home run because he is just so locked in. So give me Corey Seager going deep tomorrow. But, yeah, guys, thanks again, as always, for rocking with us here on the Dodgers Nation post game show. Be t Check in tomorrow. Find us tomorrow right after the game. Same place, same time. As always, nothing brings us together quite like Dodgers baseball. Think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. It's time for Dodger Baseball. Why not miss the perfect?